what's up everybody this is information man of the information man show this is going to be a great show um i welcome everybody that's here this is a premiere video so thank you for coming over and i hope you enjoy this uh there's a brother that i've known for a while he has supported the show uh from the very beginning when i was trying to grow this channel and i gotta say that's my man oh yapo yapo who is with us today he has a book i want to put this up here so you can see the book and then i'll put a bigger image on the screen for you to take notice this is a book that he has written he has written other novels this is based on the novel by yalpo ayapo uh, yalpo and that is uh melanin a novel and he took sort of a sci-fi or scientific uh approach to breaking down uh this whole issue around melanin we know that melanin is a protector is a pigmentation but it also can protect you from the sun it can protect you from many things that we as black people need to realize and what he did is he sort of um went into a, a situation he, he created a a very incredible plot in terms of radiation and what would happen if people needed this pigment the darker you are the more melanin you have the lighter you are the less you have what is it if we all were in need of this pigment to survive something such as radiation, a, a environmental disaster? And we know that there's a lot of environmental racism that has gone on in America where they have put cancerous chemicals, cancerous uh, vac uh, particles that are in uh, housing, that's in the dirt. I know when I lived in Oakland, the city of Oakland or the military tried to give Oakland all this land this in West Oakland. They were given the land for free and come to find out that it had dangerous chemicals in it that were cancerous. And they discovered this during the earthquake that we had back in, I think it was in 89 and uh, they tried to give this to black people. And the question is, if you flip that around in the way my man did with his novel, what if it go, it, it backfires on society and those that are less melanated, are in need of being melanated to, to survive in an environment that is radiated with chemicals and things in the environment that can bring about cancer. And what if, if only if you were a melanated person, you could survive such a disaster. We're going to talk about that today with brother Yapo. This is his book again. Once again, he's a great brother. I've uh, been very supportive of the channel. He's got other things going on. He's got websites. He's very, I would say, I, he's very uh, pro or 100% for black people. And under his philosophy, uh, Yapo has said to me privately many times that uh, we should separate and create our own societies as black people because living with our enemies has not really worked out in the long run as of right now. Um, so let's hear from this great author. Uh, like I said before, he's got other books that he's written and we'll have him, uh, break down, um, the books that he has written. What brought him to writing this book right here about melanin from a sci-fi or a scientific novel. Um, I mean, when I was looking over this folks, I mean, this would be incredible to see this in a movie, uh, TV show type st this this is incredible what the brother has written so we're gonna we're gonna hear from him right now and let me bring him in and I'm so glad to have him here all right brother Yapa unmute yourself and you know I don't mean that I don't I don't like butchering people's names but can you break down and let everybody know the significance of your name it's a very uh powerful name <laughs> yeah it's Ayapo Yapa and, oh, Yapo uh, Yapa, yes. And the way I came about the name, Yapo Yapa is an acronym mm -hmm. for if you are pissed off, you are paying attention. <laughs> All right. And, that, and that's where it came from. And I actually started going by that. But, oh, you know, before I say anything else, Info, I want to just thank you for letting me on your platform. And I appreciate it so much. You, they, you know, you and I talk privately a lot. And uh, I just appreciate you, brother. I appreciate what you're doing out here. And I appreciate how you promote our people and how you Thank support you. our people. And I just want to say 
peace to everybody that's going to be coming in on the chat. This is uh, pre-recorded, but still, people will probably be coming in on the chat, and I'll probably be in there too. So, <laughs> right. anyway, yeah, if you aren't pissed off, you aren't paying attention. And right. I've been I've been actually going by that for the past five years, and it feels odd. I'm not going to say what my what my government name is, but I, <laughs> when somebody calls me that. It right. sounds very odd to me. Mm -hmm. uh, where I am, everybody just knows me as Ayapo. And, mm. I, and I, I, I go by that now. So that's where that came from. Mm -hmm. um, once again, the novel here, Melanin, um, and I'm looking at the back of it, and you have here, Melanin is a uncompromising, timeless tale, spectacular fiction, bringing with uh, thought-provoking ideas, um, has all sorts of twists. Um, and you took sort of a, um, a interesting plot. I had a chance to look over your book a little bit, and I thought it was interesting mm -hmm. how you, you brought together the situation about environment, how you have corporations that are trying to, are, are doing environmental racism or dumping radiation on the poor, trying to get rid of the poor uh, for the almighty dollar. And in this novel, you take a twist where it becomes something that backfires on them mm -hmm. because uh, you go into uh, Hiroshima. Now, I know that we know a sister who has written books about the Hiroshima radiation. If I'm correct, am I correct about that, uh, it, Brother Yabo? It's, it's Fukushima. Fukushima. Yeah, Fukushima. Let's get that right, Fukushima. And yeah, and they, it was like about a decade ago, mm -hmm. there was a tidal wave that uh, hit uh, hit the coast, not of America, the coast of Japan. Japan. And the Fukushima nuclear power plant melted down and it started spewing radiation. And it's been okay. spewing this radiation ever since, and it still is. Okay. And so now basically the oceans are radiated, all that. But this book... Uh, basically picks up on that and then I create another radiological problem. I like something I created on my head that mixes with the Fukushima radiation and mm -hmm. gamma rays and so on. And it causes a highly mal uh, malignant form of melanoma that affects only people with theomelanin. Black mm -hmm. people have eumelanin. But if you have if you're white then you have Theomelanin. And the theomelanin uh, doesn't protect from that radiation, and they start getting the melanoma. In the book, and this isn't a big spoiler, this is the premise of the book, is that a scientist comes up with a procedure that will turn people phenotypically and genetically black. They, it's, not, it's not like being a tan white person. It's not like, you know, just a tan will do it you have to be changed down, down to your genetics so that you can uh, be protected from this melanoma. So the, the issue that the white population faces is either get this procedure that turns you phenotypically into a black person, which means that like things like your nose will get wider, your lips will fill out, mm -hmm. your hair mm -hmm. will, the texture of your hair will change, all these different things. Um, or you can stay white and take your chances, which your chances are that you're going to die. But there's so much more to the book than that. You see, you see how thick it is. There's so right. much more going on in that book. Than well, that, but... let me just say this, though, brother. In the book, you talk about industries destroying the ozone layer mm -hmm. and how the rich um, try to use their money and their power um, as a way to sort of position position themselves to as a means to um, try to survive a um, a radio a radioactive disaster or environmental disaster. So right. in your book, is this what you're what you're getting at that they're trying? They now know that we know in America, uh, black people have not been very uh, liked by white society, and we know that as much as people will hate on us, you've got people who will go in the sun and tan themselves, mm -hmm. go to tanning salons, try to get uh, as brown as they can. 
But in this situation, you're looking at people realizing that if they do not get their skin, uh, um, get some type of pigment to their skin, such as taking melanin, melanin type uh, pills. I think you talk about that in this book about uh, pills or whatever treatments to survive in the environment in this fictional, um, I would say masterpiece that you've come up with. Can you go a little bit more into that area there? Sure. Uh, What I really wanted to examine, and it's actually in the the foreword to the book, Mm -hmm. I discuss the fact that when I got the premise of the book decades and decades ago, and I think you've mentioned it before, when I saw the movie White Man's Burden, mm-hmm. uh, with John, Tra- uh, John Travolta, Harry Belafonte. And in the movie, I was so anxious to, I can remember I was so anxious to see that movie when I was young and I wasn't even conscious then. And uh, when I watched it, I was like super disappointed because all it did was change the roles of black people and white people. And that's literally all it did. It didn't speak to the social, you know, the, the social uh, aspects of it or anything. And so I, I was like, so what would it be like if you're living in a world where you used to have privilege and every advantage and all of a sudden you don't? And mm-hmm. also for black people where you are you have a boot on your neck and all of a sudden you no longer have that boot on your neck and you're held in the highest esteem and actually the darker you are, the more revered you are, the more, uh, the more opportunities you have and so on. And so I examine, I examine those type of things at the very beginning. It does talk about the, uh, the environmental racism and so on, but that's Mm -hmm. pretty much just, the setup for the rest mm-hmm. of the book because the book takes a few takes a few turns that are very interesting there are people who have read it and they got to i can't remember what chapter it was but there's about halfway through and they said it started reading like it was a totally different book and then it comes mm. it all comes back together so i mean you talk about this is interesting you talk about the gamma radiation Mm-hmm. and how x-rays that it could uh, penetrate the skin. However, alarming, unlike x-rays, gamma radiation um, easily travels, can tr- easily travel through. Once that radiation combines, um, where'd, you, where'd you get all your research? For? I mean, you get heavy into the science in this, in this book to give people, you, you lay it out nicely and clearly so that people understand what they're getting ready to get into with this book, because you lay out the science to make the, the premise for where you're going with this. You even went as far to talk about in this particular world that you've created in this book about different levels of melanin. You talked about level four. And if you're at a level Mm -hmm. four, that can make that you can, you, you would be able to sustain yourself because you talked about having darker skin uh, or brown skin. And then anybody within, uh, I guess, level five, uh, explain that, uh, explain that to everybody where you were going with the science there in the book, in terms of the world, what's happening in the world in this book, where, uh, you have an environmental disaster on your hands and those who are most melanated have the greatest chance of surviving. Go right ahead, brother. Okay. Yeah. The science in it, a, a lot of it is actually, and admittedly, pseudoscience because it's, okay. because it's science fiction it's not um because it's not a hard what's called a hard science fiction book yeah uh, hard science fiction is when you know science fiction is based on science that actually exists uh yes. and then other science fiction is uh, stuff like uh star trek or star wars it's called science fiction it's more leans more towards science fantasy the uh genre that i write in is theoretical evidence. Theoretical, fiction. okay. And and so, with just like with anything else, like if you're gonna if you're gonna lie or if you're gonna make something up, then it's the most convincing when it's based on a truth. Mm-hmm. So you know, so it is the the foundational science that I use in the book um, is real, but then I had to start creating other stuff based on it. 
like the like the uh, I don't know if you read it, but the potassium iothiazine, which is what the body starts producing yes. after uh, what black people's bodies start producing after the uh, Hirokashi radiation, which uh, which I made up Hirokashi. Right. You, I noticed that you brought in the Hirokashi. And yeah, right, I did read the uh, that part, the other part that you were talking about. Uh, name that again. The potassium. The, uh, the potassium. Yeah. Now, are I you saying that this is is it, is this made up concepts for the book? Or are these yeah. legitimate uh, things that we can find nope. in science? Yeah, those are those are made up concepts for the book because potassium. It, sounds, iodine, it's, 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 it but, came, but when I looked over it, it sounded very. <laughs> <laughs> well, it sounded thing, very, potassium. you know, legitimate. Potassium iodine can protect the body from radiation, especially. Mm -hmm. Yes, the, that's um, legitimate. Right, that's that's legitimate. That's real, but the body cannot innately create it. The body can, doesn't produce it itself. If you want mm -hmm. potassium iodine in your body to chelate radiation, then you have to you have to take it. You know, you have to ingest it. Uh, so. As far as the book is concerned, what happened with this Hirokashi radiation was that it released a, a dormant, uh, a dormant gene in the DNA, mm -hmm. and it made it so that the that the body started producing potassium iothiazine, which I made up. But but potassium iothiazine or potassium iothizine, some people call it, um, is it, it has the exact same properties as potassium iodine and so okay. you don't have to take it yeah you don't have to take it the body starts naturally producing it which in real life the body you know can't produce it on its own and that's okay. the, that's actually the foundational reason that the caucasian population has to become phenotypically and genetically black is so that their bodies can start producing potassium iothizine or thizine mm -hmm. so that so that it can protect them from the radiation and from getting the melanoma or getting melanoma. Right. Now, you also talked about in the book how melanin is a protective layer. Now, when I was in college at San Francisco State University, I took a class in, in melanin, melanin and how it works and operates. Mm -hmm. And melanin actually works like, a, like a, a photosynthesis, like a plant. It takes in positive and negative energies. And what we learned in the right. class and the professor, Dr. Professor McGee, God rest his soul, he simply said to us in class, there's no need to say, well, who's better and who's not better. He says the science will speak for itself. And he simply said the difference between black people who have darker pigmentation is that what happens is when the sun hits our skin, people don't realize is that when the sun hits your skin, it does destroy the cells in your body rapidly. When you go out into the sun, mm -hmm. the difference with people that are highly melanated and once again, the more melanin you have, the more protective layers you have and barriers in your skin, it's harder for the sun to penetrate a melanated skin, darker melanated skin tone to be able to rapidly destroy your cells, which is why they always say black don't crack, right? That black people right. uh, don't get as wrinkled as fast because we have a protector barrier and the sun can't penetrate and rapidly kill, kill those cells, even though your body's making new cells every day. Whereas people that are more fair, such as people that are Caucasian or what have you, it's easier for, this, for the sun to penetrate the skin to kill those cells. And over a period of time in their life, their skin will not have that smoothness. It will start, the wrinkle effect will start to come into effect here. Um, to me, the way you wrote the book, it almost parallels that parallels that particular fact because here we here you have created a world in which now people who would normally have looked down on black people and call us an n-word and the whole nine yard are now dependent on their very survival to come up with a way to melan melanate themselves to survive in this apocalyptic world absolutely and and another aspect of it is that during the course of the book, the world starts to starts to change, and not just in terms of more people becoming black or people becoming black. It starts to change in terms of commerce, in terms of the government, in terms of the military, everything. And the reason that it changes is because 
the, the the white who get this procedure and a lot of them start getting it, their mm -hmm. pineal glands start to decalcify. Mm -hmm. And so they start to experience true empathy and true concern and true love for, you know, for people and for nature and so on. And that's another, that's another aspect wow. of the book. So, you, so you're saying, you're saying, Yaupo, that when people begin who are non-black begin to get this, uh, I guess, what is it, treatments or, you know, inf the infusion yeah, of melanin yeah. in their body, procedure of melanin in their body, it actually changes their outlook and how they see people and, 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 and treat people. Because we've always heard that, that, that we've always heard that about a decalcified, you know, panino gland that the panino gland is not functioning mm -hmm. in the way uh, black people's panino gland functions. And therefore the theory goes that um, that's why black people um, seem to have more empathy and sympathy. And when you don't have a functioning panino gland, you are void of uh, sympathy and empathy for people. We've heard that over the years. So your book touches right. on that area. Right. It, it absolutely does. And, over the course of the book, like I say, you can see things start to you can see things like start to change. And also another another byproduct is that as people as black people are turning or as white people are turning black, right? Mm. Uh, we all know <laughs> we all know that black people have to be three times smarter, three times faster, three times better, have three times as much education just mm -hmm. to get the same mm -hmm. thing or maybe even less. And so what so what happens when now you're you you can no longer depend upon your whiteness to co to cover up for your mediocrity. And so I go for a job and you go for a job and we're both black, but you through your racism and your system of white supremacy have forced me to have to be three times better than you. Now you can't even you can't even compete with me. Well, Yapo, let's stop right there, because we want people to go out and buy this book and understand the the science that you put in this book, the the science fiction that you put in this book, uh, rather yet. Let's explain, or better yet, you explain to the listening and watching public out there. Um, and I want to say peace to everybody out there that's watching out there in YouTube. Uh, Roco TV, Facebook, and all the other platforms that I broadcast into. Once again, this is a pre-produced video. Uh, we want you to definitely check out this book by Oyapo, uh, Melanin, a novel. This book can be found on Amazon and where else, uh, Yapo? We got Amazon. We got what, Kindle? And, and on, right, uh, and on Barnes & Noble. Barnes & Noble is only digital right now, and I'm setting digital. that up so that it's, um, uh, uh physical copy like that but right now mm -hmm. if you want a physical copy or a digital copy you can go to amazon and get it for the kindle and you don't mm -hmm. need a kindle to get it you can just download the kindle app and still read it or you can get the soft cover just like uh brother info man has and or you can get the hard cover which is the one that i want so mm -hmm. i'm <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. I like this though, but but yeah. but with that said though, brother, because we want we we want to make sure that we want to make people understand exactly where we're coming from in the book. Let not to give mm -hmm. it all because people need to go out and purchase this book. We talk about supporting black businesses, black people that are doing positive things, and I want to say to everybody out there listening: here's a black man as a, a author. He has written a fantastic book. A uh, fantastic novel in this case, fictional novel, sci-fi type of novel. Please go out there and support. We've already we've said to you where you can find this book at. This will there will in the description of this video you will find links to where you can find this book, such as Amazon and what have you. Um, if I'm not mistaken, Yapo, before we go forward, you also have a YouTube mm -hmm. channel uh, that you've had for some time. Let everybody know mm -hmm. where they can find you on the on the social medias as we go forward with this particular um, show today to talk more about your book and what's going on inside of this book. But let everybody know where they can find you on social media. Okay, well, I have my my uh, my YouTube channel, which is Iyapo Yapa, uh, just the spell. 
and I also have another YouTube channel, and I bet you didn't even know about this one. It's called Reading and Writing in the Dark. And so okay. that one is, yeah, so I have those two YouTube channels, and I also have my website, ayapoyapa.com, aptly named. Mm-hmm. And on that site, you can uh, you can re- you can um, subscribe to my newsletter. The newsletter yes. is called the reading and it's called reading and writing in the dark. And I also have a podcast that's available on Spreaker, iHeartRadio, uh, and Spotify. And that is reading and writing in the dark. Because reading and writing in the dark. Everything that okay. I try to push is about our people taking control of our own narrative as opposed to yes. having the people who hate us always giving us our narrative to us giving uh-huh. it having uh-huh. having i'm not gonna i don't want to get it started but having two <laughs> white women write a movie about you don't don't try to tell me my history i'm tired of white folks trying to tell me my history i right. want to take control of my own narrative i want our people to take control of our own narrative Right. Yeah. When you're talking about the woman King. And of course I did a video last week about that. And I had a lot of issues with that movie from a historical point of view. Mm-hmm. And, uh, it's funny that you would say that because after we, I did that show, I listened to some radio over the week and you've had people calling in radio shows actually saying like, Hey, it's given the history. And I'm like, you guys have been bamboozled and you've been fooled. And it's just, it's, and, and that's the thing. We got to get our people out of the, out of the, uh, back into the light of knowing yes, and having right. knowledge of self and knowing what's really going on. Uh, Yapo, everybody out if there listening. Info, yes, info, go if, ahead. If, if that movie is history, then Abraham Lincoln vampire killer is a freaking historical <laughs> movie. Yeah. Right. Right. I mean, um, the kingdom did exist. Those women did exist, but the dialogue in the movie and some of the conflicts in the movie were not legitimate. Other than the fact that, yeah, the Europeans were trying to invade them and take them over the very Europeans that they were in partnership with at some point in time. So, uh, but let's move forward. Um, and everybody mm-hmm. letting you know the, he talked about the website. Don't worry, go down in the description of this video. You'll see his website and all the goodies that will get you connected to his newsletter and to connecting to his book and all the other novels and other things that he's got going within his sphere. And of course his uh, podcast will have that connected there in the description. If you go down there and check that out, ladies and gentlemen, but let me get back on track here, uh, Yapo, cause I, I, we don't want to talk over people's head, mm-hmm. but when we talk about the conversation that we just had, I want you to let people know without giving everything away. Cause they need to buy, they need to buy the book. But get, let bring people up to speed wh- where you kind of are going with that whole thing about um, white people needing to be um, black in order to survive in this environment in the book that you've written. And now it kind of equals everything because now they, don't, they can't uh, get the privilege of their whiteness anymore because they're in need of being just as dark as us because they cannot survive within the environment without making this change. Can you let lead people where, how you kind of put that together, the premise of all of that? Well, yeah, well, just like, just like, just like any other kind of science fiction or even, even like the twilight zone, a lot Mm -hmm. of times people will use stories. They'll use fantastical premises to talk about social issues. And when, when I wrote Melanin, I did it from the standpoint of trying to uh, make a statement about at least the way that I perceived uh, things were in society and what was going on with black people and with white people and how we ended up in this, not only how we ended up in this mess, but what, what the uh, underlying problems of it are. And so, like, even with everything we've talked about, I guarantee you, it, it doesn't even scratch the surface of what's in the book. And like mm-hmm. I said before, because I, I don't I don't have the physical copy. I can't get it yet where I am. And But mm-hmm. it is a, it's a thick book. 
and it's because there's a lot in it, but it's not boring. It's not like reading a textbook. You know, there's a, we talk, you know, I talk a, a little bit of pseudoscience in it or whatever, but that's just to set up the story. Uh, mm -hmm. But the story talks, it, it, the story has things about relationships in it, has things about self hate in it, uh, and a lot about where, uh, well, no, I don't want to say that because it'd be a spoiler, but it has a, it has a whole <laughs> lot in it. And I guarantee this, it, what we're talking about here doesn't even scratch the surface. And there is a twist in the story that will just blow your mind, guarantee. I see. Well, y Yalpo, what do you, when you decide to write a book because I think you've written other books before what mm -hmm. goes into creating a book like the novel melanin how long did it take you to put this together conceive this what's your your writing process well I I started writing melanin about four years ago sorry about that car out there or that motorcycle but it's okay continue brother. Melanin about about four years ago, uh, around the same time that I met my, my wife, Angela. Mm -hmm. And I only made it to chapter three, and then I stopped writing it. Okay. And last year, around, it was September, October, I decided to pick it back up and finish it. And I finished it in about three, no, it wasn't even three months. I finished it in about two months from just having three chapters all the way to the end. Uh, and the book's almost 600 pages. It's, it's like two or three pages short of 600. And after that, I wrote another one called Paradigm Void. And that's a collection of short stories. And that one is about 300 pages. Then I wrote The uh, Redemption of Maxine Allison. That one's about 200 pages. Then I wrote um uh, uh and what of the cargo which is one of my personal favorite it is an awesome story this one's almost 400 pages uh and the point i'm trying to make is that just between september is like september of last year and april of this year yes i i completed two novels a book of short stories and a novella, and now I'm on the next Paradigm Void. And I also have a story, an ongoing story that's on a platform called Kendall Vela. And what that is, is a short form kind of a thing where you, where writers go on there and they have their stories in episodes. And their stories are anywhere from 500 words to 5,000 words, 5,000 words being like 10, pages if it was typed up yes and, and they go in like season one episode one season one episode two three four and so on until the story is finished and my stories my stories for what i have is called um you know, surviving the worst and mm -hmm. right now i have the first three episodes up if you go on kendall vela and look up um uh, surviving the worst the first three episodes of every story on Bella are free to read and then after that if you if you're hooked and you want to read more then you uh you know you buy tokens they're not expensive and then you and that's how the the writers get paid but you get tokens and then you can keep unlocking the stories as the stories develop okay okay um who, where do you think you get your inspiration for your novels and your books that you've written? I mean, when you grew up, who were some of the people that influenced you in your writing? Were there any uh, authors that really um, you took to heart what they were writing and you said, hey, I want to be just like that brother or that sister? Um, are you, you're familiar with Octavius, I hope I'm saying her name correct, Octavius Butler? Octavia Butler. Octavia, mm -hmm. yeah, Octavia. And she sort of writes uh, these sort of sci-fi 
novels and she and she goes into areas about slavery and how mm -hmm. black people were treated in slavery and she puts a sci-fi twist to the way she writes those type of novels as it relates to the things that black people go through what a sci-fi twist this to me your book uh reminds me of that does she have any influence on this your writing or is it someone else that had influence on your writing actually to, to be honest uh, arthur arthur c clark and um, a writer named Robert Silverberg, are, who are two of my favorite sci-fi authors, and they're they're a couple of white guys. I have to admit, it. it's uh, mm -hmm. Robert Silverberg and C. Clark, especially with his book Childhood. And, uh, I I I ended up really liking their writing styles, but you know, again, I have to be honest. I I was never a big time reader. I've I've read a lot of books, but I was never a big reader. Uh, now I've turned into a big reader. Okay. But mostly I got inspired by watching old Twilight Zone episodes and so on. But even more than that, I started out, you, you, you know I'm a cartoonist. I uh, cartooned uh, professionally for, you know, over 30 years, you know, the better right, part of my cartoonist. life. And so, yeah, and if you, anybody that goes on my website, I have a complete section separate section for my cartoons and that if you want to see my cartoons or in another section for my music that you may or may not like i like my music but you know you may or may not like it but as far as you know people who inspire me um yeah it would be it'd be like clark and silverberg uh but what really inspires me now even more than any of them is my love and, and this may sound corny but it's just the truth of it my love for black people and mm -hmm. my desire and my conviction that we have got to take control of our own narrative and start telling our own stories and start presenting to our people, our people, the way that we're supposed to be, not, not something that a bunch of white people cooked up and then they're handing to us. You know, Black Panther was created by a couple of white guys. Wakanda was created by a couple of white guys. And so yes. on. I, I don't yes. I'm, I'm tell the, the truth. And to me, our stuff. I want our people who love our people handing out, you know, giving us our stuff. And that's not to say that every character in there, there's a character in, uh, in Melanin mm -hmm. named Ryan. And this isn't a spoiler. I'm telling you, I, he was one of my favorite characters to write. And I hate his effing guts hmm. and people and everybody that i talked to at like the writers group everybody knows how much i hate this guy and everybody who has ever read melanin hates him and are you able to let the folks out there who will potentially buy the book give us a little insight into ryan's character is he sort of the the troublemaker the the can you give us a little tad bit so that people can kind of get a little understanding of why you hate Ryan, the character that you've come up with in the book. Without it being a spoiler, I hope it's not a spoiler. Drop it brother, out yeah, but are you there? No, are you there, brother? Me. Yeah, a little bit of borking, but go ahead. I can hear you now. It was doing We're, all right for a minute. <laughs> okay, start. Yeah, okay, go go right ahead. Go, yeah, go right ahead. Uh, okay, I thought that I lost you. Okay, um, Ryan. The reason I I'll put it like this: Ryan is a is a self hating black man. Mm. In the story, Ooh, we got a lot without, of we got a lot of self hating black people. Too, yeah, we got well well right, I can he, relate to it because we got a lot of self hating. Okay. Because look, look, y'all, but we have a lot of self-hating black people in our society today. So I'm pretty sure you got some inspiration from what we have going around the landscape today, right? <laughs> uh, yeah, right. And he he just takes it, he takes it to a he, he takes it to a whole nother level. Hmm. He takes it to a whole nother level. And uh, I if I say 
too much about them. They'll give away too much. But yeah, I right. I I, I, I don't like them. Other people don't like them. But at the same time, <laughs> he was one of the most interesting characters that I wrote. He doesn't have a he doesn't have like a wide character arc. His character arc is pretty straight. But uh, he, but he's a he's an he's an interesting study okay. in self hate, and so hmm. uh, that, and I I'm, I'm glad that I added I'm, I'm glad I have him in there as part of the of the story. I'm also glad that there are characters like uh, um, Desmond and Lameha in the story. They're a black couple. And mm-hmm. they are kind of like the epitome of black love. I have like these different archetypes in the book, and mm-hmm. so uh, so you got black love. There, you got black love in the book. Like, yeah, Ryan. Mm-hmm. Well, let me say this: you've got black love in the book. Mm-hmm. You've got the help the the self hating uh, black man in the book, right? Right. Uh, you've got, uh, you know the evil corporations that are all money grabbing. You've got white mm-hmm. folks with their riches trying to uh, save themselves by now and realizing that, hey, we're going to have to melanate ourselves to survive. And it's kind of interesting because if you look at our society today, Yapo, right. what are white people, what is white society doing today? Uh, it used to be a time when they made fun of black, uh, black features, right? Our, our pigment, how we look. And now you've got people uh, in the mm-hmm. white society, they're doing things to thicken their lips. They're, we got people getting booty, uh, you know, uh, enhancements, all these different things. They're, they're tanning, all these different things uh, to look um, like us, but also they hate us. You know what I'm saying? So people, oh, people want to, people want to, people want to listen to our music. People like our our music, our coat. They want, they want to be up. They want to griff off of our culture but they still don't like us, even though they're trying to look like us, changing their features and so on and so forth. The women, the men, we see that throughout society. Right. Absolutely. There's a, there's a part of the book and this is like near the beginning, but it's the uh, man who has uh, had a procedure. He turns black. He's actually uh, one of the main (laughs) characters and his doctor's talking to him because there's a lot of inside jokes for black people in there too, because, the doctor's talking to him and says, you know, when's the last time you listened to an upbeat song? He says, you, know, <laughs> the, you remember that part? And she said, she says, um, you're going to, when you, when you hear the next time you hear an upbeat song, just start clapping to it. And I guarantee you, <laughs> you're going to come in on two or four. What's this? Two or four, what are you talking about? And it's just like little stuff, little stuff like that. Because um, as far as as far as the book is concerned, as far as what I believe and what I know about melanin, when yeah. people start getting these treatments, they're able to see more colors. Food tastes different to them. It, it like enhances the flavor of the foods that they eat, um, and you know, just just things like that. They they physiologically change. Physiologically change and start to discover Mm -hmm. things that they had never realized before because of uh, taking the taking. Now, now, when people get the treat, not to give everything away in the book, ladies and gentlemen, this is very important question. When people in the novel, in the fictional novel that you've created here in the book, Melanin. What is the procedure that they go through? Uh, Is it a grueling, painful procedure that they go through? I know in the book you talked about some type of uh, pills and things of that nature. You talked about iodine. Can you elaborate over the treatment that mainly in your fictional novel that white people are going through because now they have to survive uh, and become black uh, like the very people we know historically that they have been racist and oppressive towards, which is black people. I find that interesting in this sci-fi novel go right ahead right so i i don't go deep into the actual procedures but what i what i do say is at the very beginning they they tried that they tried like melanin pills they tried what was called extreme tanning and all these different (laughs) things and none of it worked because it didn't change them genetically and that's what the problem was they had to they they had to have a procedure that would change 
change that feel melanin into you melanin so that they could actually be black people. And uh, so then after they after they started turning black, there were some of them that started committing suicide because when their genetics changed, then they also uh, they also started took on some of the epigenetic memory of black people. And so now you have the epigenetic memory of white people who were or were enslavers and the epigenetic memory of the people who were enslaved. And so you end up with wow. a war within your own self. And so some some of the people were like losing their minds. Some of them were killing themselves and so on. So uh, after people get that procedure, they have to be in therapy, some of them for the rest of their lives, you know, just so that they wow. can cope. Now but check this out the, in your in your book in your book there's a passage where you say here everybody listen to this this is out of this is in the novel melanin by my man yalpo ayapo uh, yapo uh it says here in a time of scientific discovery discovered the scientists discovered that this new cancer did not affect people with dark complexions instead their dark pigmentation the result of high amounts of melanin acted as a natural shield from the radi radiations. There was a radiation that you were playing off in this novel, in this book that you wrote, that was mm -hmm. causing people to get cancer. Let me go. Let me go on here. Acting as a natural shield from the radiation, research further reveals that the combination of the two radiation and can you name the fictional places you said Fuka? Was it Fukushima? Yeah, Fukushima and is real. That's Fukushima, a, that's which is okay. Real. So Fukushima is real. You you said Fukushima, and then the other one is Hiro, Hir, Hir, Hiroshima. No, uh, he, uh, he, uh, Hirokashi. Hirokashi okay. is in the place. Is the scientist that discovered this new radiation, and so that they named it Hirokashi radiation. Okay, so, so well, Fukushima Hiro, is a real Hiro, place, right? Where right. I think. Uh, um, who's our good sister who and then Hiroshi, wrote a book? Um, oh, I'd have to be looking at the book to even remember his name. But we got okay. So we got Fukushima, which is a real place. Then we have Hiroshi. When you wrote, you right here, Anjali which Shabazz. eventually, okay, Avril Lavigne. Radical sister. Okay. she wrote. The radical this sister. Black, she wrote a this book. Black uh huh. So let me say shout out to her right now. Uh, so you have. And then you said eventually right. the researchers she wrote, she wrote three. name those three books that, she, that the radical sister wrote. And she radical sister has a YouTube channel as well. Check her out. I interviewed her maybe a couple years ago on this channel, ladies and gentlemen, name the three books that she has out. Uh, Yalpo. And I think you're the one that did the art for her books. Name those books real quick. Okay. Yeah. The first one is this black. And then the sequel, she wrote a sequel to this black called This Black Nation. And she also has a book called Furnace of Affliction. And Furnace of Affliction is a nonfiction book and it is radiation cures. Because if you watch her channel, you listen to her channel and also in the book itself, it explains what, what these radiations are doing to people, just, just like why these young people are dropping dead and so on. This is all because of uh, the, the world has become irradiated. But there yeah. are cures yeah. for it. There are things that will chelate this radiation out of you. And she wrote a book about it. And I wrote the foreword to that book, by the way. Wow. Let me read this here. You wrote here, created through a dominant. So we talked about the, the uh, Fukushima and Hiroshima, if I'm saying that correct, began referring to it as Hiroshima radiation only created through a dominant property of the melanated population DNA, ladies and gentlemen, that was, that was activated by, let me go over to the next page here, by the combined radiation, cellular and genetic mutation within that population, which triggered their bodies to spontaneously 
produce a natural hormone. Now I want you to pronounce this science named as potassium. And then you got IO physics. Don't break now. Now, now you talked about that earlier. This, this is deep stuff, man. You, you, you telling me that this is yeah, uh, that pseudo? Up. This stuff sounds like <laughs> this stuff sounds <laughs> like man. But well, look, man, when somebody reads this, man, it, it this is what makes your writing fascinating. This is what makes reading science fiction books fascinating because when you read it, it really sounds like hey, this could be really possible. And the reason why I say this, y'all, well, because come on, man, you know that they've been studying black bodies. They've been studying black people and studying melanin yeah. for a long time. They've been trying to figure yeah. out how they can harness what we got in our bodies. Black people, and you know this, we are the most researched and studied black bo uh, bodies on this planet. They, we, they study us because they know that we have something that they want to tap into. That's so even that, though you're making some of this pseudo things in your book up for the fiction of the book, some of this ain't too far fetched, man. Some of it ain't all the way far fetched. It, it, we never know if this becomes a real thing, man. You know. Well, you, you know what? It, it, just like I said uh, before, good science fiction is going to typically be rooted in some some kind of real science. Right. And then you make up stuff from there, and it's and it can sound convincing and sound real. Just like uh, just some like some of the other technologies I talk about in the book sound like they're real, uh, but it's just stuff that I made up. Uh, okay. But it's ba but it's based on but it's based on reality. Okay. So, okay. Yeah, with that, but but at the same time, again, uh, later I was telling you about Isaac Asimov. He actually wrote about um, wrote about um, satellites bouncing signals off of satellite to, uh, to instantaneously uh, send signals around the world. He wrote about that decades before it was even a thought or before it was actually a thing. So yes. th there's a lot of books you could go back and look at that talk about, even even Dick Tracy, you know, he used to talk on a, a wrist radio that had a TV in it, <laughs> and now people are doing it with a, with a right. iWatch. And or so uh, people just, had, you know. they made predictions in the 50s that a day would come where we would be talking on cell phones, right? Or phones that don't have, you know, in, in reality is it is that we do have this. So, so right. I think a lot of, I think a lot of inspirations for some of the inventions that we have do come out of sci-fi and people's imaginations that are put into a concept of reality. But as we get close to concluding this particular program today, uh, Yapo, what do you want people Mm -hmm. to most get out of your writing, out of your books? What do you want them to leave away with when they read one of your novels, such as uh, your newest novel right now? And folks, make sure you go out there and get this. It's on Kindle. You can get this on Amazon. What else, where else, uh, Yapo, besides Amazon and Kindle? Yeah. What's the next place? Uh, that's at, at, in Barnes & Noble. For Barn the Barnes & Noble. And they can also can... Do you have it set up on your website where they can purchase it straight from your website as well. No, well, if you go to my website, it's going to just direct you back to either Amazon or Kindle. Okay. And you can you can go to Goodreads and read okay. reviews of it, or you okay. can find a review from both those other platforms also. Okay. So we want folks to go out and support this book, support a black man, not a writer, a great writer, uh, giving you a great sci-fi novel. That because we don't, I'm going to tell you right now, we don't have, you know, I talked about Octavia Butler. There's not a lot of uh, authors out there, black authors anyway, that are writing um, sci fi books from a black perspective. I don't think the system, I don't think the it's flooded with people out there that are doing it. I'm sure someone is doing it, but not, it's not flooded. And I think this is a, a great, uh, a great book, Yapo. But like I was saying, brother, um, and I need people to go out there and support and get this book. What do you want people when they get this book, they purchase it, whether it be uh, the hardback or the softback, or they get it on uh, Kindle through, you know, uh, what do you call that? Audio books or whatever. What do you want people to, yeah, you can get this on audio book, everybody. So that's another way that you can also support this brother and what he's doing. But what do you want people well, to most walk away from? Can you get an yet. audio book still? Okay, well, let me stop it's right there. It's not audio yet, but I'm working on that. 
Okay, so let, let me just stop right there. But eventually, as you just said, you're going to get the book on, on audio book because there's a lot of people who like to just sit back and listen rather than just read the pages. So you are eventually, you are working on that right now. Absolutely. Okay. Right. And then I'll let, tell let me- little, I'll tell you a little secret. I'll, I'll tell you a little secret. If you, if you go on a Kindle, either mm -hmm. online or on, on your device, and you're reading it on a Kindle, if you swipe mm -hmm. two fingers down, I, well, I know this is true for iPad. If you swipe two fingers down, it'll start reading it to you. Oh, okay. So and that goes yeah, well, let's do book. okay. Well, let's do this. When because I don't want to misspeak here for everyone that's listening out there in the public, and I appreciate everybody that's here uh listening to this uh program to give you all a clap. But Yapo, when you uh get this to the point where it is audiobook, make sure you let me know so that I can make an announcement the next time I go live and remind people, because I'm going to be reminding people about your book um, here on after uh, going forward. And I also want you, you. Um, as I was, um, where I was trying to go originally, is I want you to let people know um, what they can expect from reading your book when they walk away. What do you want them to get out of this, should I say, when they read and purchase your book? This much I, this much I can promise you. If you after you read melanin as a black person not only will you feel you'll feel uplifted but if you read anything that i write you will never feel insulted you will never feel talked down to mm -hmm. you'll never feel mm -hmm. like someone uh is is like slighting you in any way because and i know i keep saying this but this is where i come from is I want us to take control of our own narrative. And I have nothing but love, honor, and respect for my people. And when you read my work, that that love, honor, and that respect guaranteed comes through every time in everything that I write. And so whether it's melanin or uh, what of the cargo or paradigm void, which consists of 10 short stories uh you're always going to see that you're going to always feel that respect and you're always going to or i'll put it like this i always do my very best to give my best and to write the best stories that i can and to write fantastic stories and i'll say this also if you register or register if you sign up for my newsletter is a free newsletter it comes out every month reading and writing in the dark and when you sign up on uh on my website ayapoyapa.com then uh you also it also gives you a free download of a story called moanesis the oak tree it's a short okay. story from my uh, uh from my paradigm void book and i've heard nothing but good things about that story nothing but good things about it so uh you okay. get a, you know you and get once a again download of that so yeah. okay let me just say this too yapo once again everybody if you're wondering well where can i find all this great stuff that yapo is talking about once again if you scroll down in the description of this video all you have to do is scroll down and you will see the link to his website and i also will throw in the links that will get you directly to uh the books if you want to purchase and support the brother and anything else that I can put at the, at the bottom of this uh, video in the description that can get you more information about this brother. Let me say this to you. You named a few of the other novels that you have. When people mm -hmm. go to your website, they will see illustrations of those uh, books. Matter of fact, let me read, let make sure you remind everybody of your, your Twitter page, because I've been noticing on your Twitter that you've been promoting and posting Twitter uh, means related to your books, your other books that you've written. Make sure you let everybody know about your, and I think what I'll do is I'll put your Twitter link. Well, the Twitter link, ladies and gentlemen, uh, is going to be in the description, is in the description of this video, just so you know. But Yapo, um, tell us about that. You've been putting um, Twitter means with your other novels. Is that right? I, I have a favorite, especially 
be putting those up. Definitely putting up okay. melanin because, as as you know, melanin got to uh, number sixty one in the top one of black science fiction novels, and then it it, it I think is uh, like four days ago it fell out of the top one hundred. So I'm trying to get okay. it back into top one hundred and hopefully get it to number one because it, it's more than just like sci fi story. It mm -hmm. really is something that black people need to read because there's a lot of it, it, it's not like I said it's not like you're going to be reading a textbook but okay. there's a lot of good information and good things in it okay well Yapo I want to thank you again for uh, coming on board thank um, you really appreciate that we're going to uh, definitely promote the book I will uh, definitely, when I go live with other shows that I do, I'll be popping your book up on the screen for people to see and let them know where they can go purchase the book and who you are and what have you. Uh, I think you gave people a great overview of what the book is about, what they can expect without, you know, we're, 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 we're on a top, we're on a tight rope here. We don't want to give all the plot away because we want people to buy the book and be surprised. We don't want to give them all the surprises and then it, they're not surprised when they get to those passages. So. I think we did a good job on that type rope of giving information yeah, without spoiling everything, but he, but basically enticing people to say, Hey, let me check out this book, you know, black author here, his brother's got other books as well. So let's support that. Let's do it folks. Let's support uh, brother Yapo. Any final words you have before we end, we end today. Yeah, I, I can say in all honesty, even with all we've talked about, we, we, we didn't even scratch the surface of what's in the book. And also, uh, just one last time, if you go to my website, ayapoyapa.com, mm -hmm. and uh, you go to uh, uh, Books by Ayapo, it shows you all the books that I've completed, and it also shows you my upcoming projects, and it also has a link to where you can go mm -hmm. to um, Surviving the Worst. That's okay. now that's available right now. Okay. Well, Yapo, before we go, because you said we only scratched the surface, is there anything mm -hmm. else about the new novel that you have out, Melanin, that you would like to let people know about that we may not have discussed that you just want to give them a little teaser about before we end? Uh, all I can say is that <laughs> there really is a there really is a serious twist in the story that is that basically the entire world is in the balance. Okay. So I'll say that. And that I'm working on the sequel to Melanin right now. All right. That's very fair. Very fair. All right, my brother. Well, um, you take care of yourself. Uh, we'll be in contact. You know, we always talk off these, uh, off these streams and off of these uh, social media airwaves privately. And I appreciate right, sure, you uh, contacting me whenever something comes up. We'll be talking behind the scenes. And I thank you for always supporting the channel, coming over when you can, and uh, being a fixture within the family over here. And uh, tell your lovely wife that I said hello, and uh, it's good to, I'm glad to see you all together, flourishing and, and doing well together. And I, she's quite a talented lady thank herself. So make yes, sure you tell is. her that, that I send uh, my love to her. And uh, you and both she has, be... She has a book that's coming out on Bella. Um, it's either tomorrow or the day after tomorrow. Oh, so. okay. Okay, fantastic. So, um, hey, but tell her I said hello. And, and when that book comes out, let me know about it so that we can let people know about her book as well, my good brother, okay? I will. All right, brother. Well, with that said, brother, we're going to get out of here. You have a great evening. And everybody out there, thank you for watching the program today. And, and I hope you enjoyed the program uh, for the time that we've been on. Go out and check out the book right here. You see it in my hand. Melanin, you see it on the screen. Go get the novel by Yapo. Uh, like he said, it's on Kindle. It's on um, Amazon. Um, go get the book. Enjoy it. The links are in the description of this video so that you can be able to connect to the book and connect to his website and all the other things that he's got going on. So everybody take care. Thank you, Yapo. And uh, have a great evening, a great night. And I want everybody out there Thank to have you. a great uh, weekend, a great week. Uh, and be safe because we got a lot of crazy things going on in this world. So thank you again, everybody. Peace.
Appreciate it, buddy. All right, Yapo. Take care, brother. All right, everybody. All thank right. you thank again. You. Oh, no problem at all, brother. Everybody, thank you out there. That's the conclusion of this program. You all take care once again. Thank you.